So what we're actually doing is fishing the intercoastal waterway. Uh, if you scroll through my video feed and you find the one where I cut my arm open falling on some rocks, it was right over there. Beach house is actually right behind me. This is a place my family is staying at the moment. The wind is picking up also, which is what the camera's dancing around, even though the forecast promised me that wouldn't happen. Liars, all of them. But anyway, what we're trying to do is we're trying to catch, well, anything that will bite, but two species that I have in mind. Stingrays, which I've talked about before, the shallow water is a perfect hunting ground for them, but also mullet. You know, mullet typically you need to catch with a cast net. At least that's how most people do it. I'm gonna try to catch them float fishing. Now there's loads of mullet in here, there's no question. I watched them earlier this afternoon, you know, for better part of an hour, hundreds of them swimming around. But getting a mullet to take a hook bait is notoriously difficult. Uh, in Europe, they use breadcrumbs and fly rods quite effectively, but I'm gonna try something a little bit different. First, let me show you the float that I'm using. Typical foam float, you've seen this before, but this on top is actually a glow stick. So you have this little rubber attachment that fits over the top of your float, and in it, it's this right here. And if I crack this open, it's that chemical reaction in there, and you get a glow stick out of it. If I put it over here where there's uh, not as much light from my lantern, you can see, which by the way, has burned the fingerprints off of my forefinger and my thumb. It's killing me right now. Anyway, glow stick works quite nice and it fits right into this top slot of your float. So I can throw this out in the pitch black and actually see a fish affected. But down here, and I'm using our, our carp setup by the way. I don't normally use this in salt water, but uh, this is six pound line. It's fluorocarbon, so a six pound fluorocarbon, so it's very hard to see, it's very thin, very supple. And coming down about six inches, I've got a size 12 bait hook. Very, very small, and on the end of it, I've actually got a uh, halibut pellet, a krill and a halibut pellet. And I've tied a line, they're pre-drilled, so I tied a line through it, secured it to the pellet, and then just used the hook to go underneath the, uh, the line. So it's kind of what they do in Europe with the bands with their pellets. They have these little rubber bands, these elasticating bands, and they'll hook it under the band. I haven't got those, but I've got fishing line, so I'm using that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cast out my float and see if I can get a mullet to come up and take that. Now, mullet are peculiar fish. They feed mostly on algae and other plant matter, but I find that all fish, strangely, even those that are you know, pretty much vegetarian, are still really heavily attracted by the scent of other fish and uh, animal fats and oils. It's really weird. I think it's, it's an instinctive drive. I mean, I'm not an animal behavior specialist, but uh, I really do think it kind of goes down to this instinctual drive to get food when you can. So anyway, I'm going to cast this out. Of course, the wind is working against me, as it always does. Fish on the other line, perhaps. This line has a bit of shrimp on it. I'm just going to reel in. Yep, yep, there it is. I can feel it. What have we got? Okay, no surprise here, guys. Had a feeling this was going to be the order of the day. A little gaff top catfish, which I don't think I've actually had a chance to show you on the show before. I mean, if you fish Texas, you know what it is. But let me just hold them still so I can show you. Because they are very interesting animals. Gaff top. As are all their cousins in the catfish family. All three some odd thousand of them. So here's the gaff top. And he's actually, gaff top is short for gaff top sail, as in the top sail of a ship. And that's what his name comes from right there, that top fin. So typical catfish, big wide mouth, whiskers, long whiskers, and then really sharp pectoral fins that will absolutely ruin your day. Yeah, not much to it. Pretty fish. I mean, they get pretty big. I've, I've caught gaff top over 30 inches, which is really big. It's really close to the record, if I'm not mistaken, down on Bolivar Peninsula. This is not our target species, so let's throw him back. Use my towel, because God almighty catfish do leave behind a mess. It's another reason I'm not a huge fan of catching them. It is a lot of work for very little reward. It's a lot of work for more work, basically. Another reason I don't like catfish very much is because, number one, they always take hooks deep. And that one is fine, I got the whole hook back. But in addition to, you know, 
potentially causing you to kill a fish, and I'm a catch and release fisherman, I, you know, I don't want to kill the fish if I don't have to. Apart from causing that to be more of a common occurrence, that means their mouth, those rasping pads, go further up your line, and they tend to chafe it up, and you usually have to cut the line and re retie the hook so you don't lose a fish in the next fight. You saw how tiny that catfish's mouth was. It had this entire piece of shrimp in its mouth. It's ridiculous. Anyway, let's get this back out. I do expect this to happen over and over and over. However, I am, I'm just, I'm confident, guys. I'm confident that rays come out here. Just strategically, it makes sense. Uh, you know, rays are big predators that can access very shallow water. It would make sense if you fish shallow water at night with an abundant food source, you would find that predator. What I am going to do is throw some of these in the water just to get that scent in the water. I'm going to throw them right in front of me. I wish I had a mesh bag and make some chum out of this. Get some bread, some oatmeal. But I'm just going to drop them straight in. Two handfuls. I've got a couple more of these um, containers. There's no shortage of pellets. They're also relatively inexpensive. I think I got them for like five bucks each. Well, guys, we're we're into a bigger fish, but it's not uh, it's not anything new. Bigger fish, same family, different species. This is a hardhead catfish. It's actually a relatively large one. He put up a relatively decent fight. I actually thought he was a much bigger fish. There we go. I was also fighting him, you know, a fairly small hook, so I wasn't putting a lot of pressure on him. Didn't want to pull a, the hook out of its mouth if it was something worth catching. I have to use my handy dandy pliers. In a true catfish fashion, he ruined everything else I was doing at the moment, so my uh, float that had the pellet on it got tangled up in this line and lost my bait. So here you go, this is a hardhead catfish, aptly named for the particularly bony feature on their head, which is actually something a lot of catfish have, it's not particularly special. But uh, yeah, this is the most notorious bait thief on the Gulf Coast. Uh, it's actually, that's the hardest, I mean it's the easiest fish to catch rather, on the Gulf Coast. This is the one you are most likely to get on your line, no matter what you throw out there. And like I said, I think I mentioned this before, one of the big issues with fishing for catfish is you can't just use a larger bait. That's the thing with sunfish in freshwater, if you don't want to catch them, you know, scale your bait up. With these guys, their mouth is so big, they can take virtually anything. So it's just part of fishing out here. You just got to deal with them. So let's throw this guy back. And then you got to deal with the slime on your hands. Oh, God, my life. It's so hard so hard guys all right now fair warning when it comes to cast netting I absolutely suck beyond all recognition of the technique known as cast netting or throwing a cast net. secure rope to wrist stop camera from moving all over the place straighten camera slack now, I have seen people do this all sorts of ways where they'll twirl it or they'll put it over their shoulder and then spin and throw it. I can't do any of those things. It's also been ages since I've used one. I remember what I used to do is I would hook and loop over each finger. God almighty. Hook and loop over each finger like so. And this is probably not the best way to do this, guys. This is not a tutorial on how to throw a cast net. You will not see that video on my channel. This is me trying to manage. If you can tell me the best way to do this, leave a comment below because clearly I don't know what it is. Anyway, this is the way I've always done it and it works uh, okay, just okay. So I'm gonna do this right here. I'm gonna hold it each loop in one finger on this hand and this on the other hand. I'm gonna kind of throw it out sideways like this, whoosh. And over very short distances, I can manage a circle. So let's give this a shot. Eh, it's kind of a kidney shape. 
Now I gotta be careful because there's a lot of oyster beds in here. I don't wanna be losing this cast net. Okay, nothing there, no surprise. No surprise at all. Let's try a little bit further out. All right, guys, hold that order. Fish running off of the other line. Fish running off of the other line. Something on, but it's tiny. Probably a gaff top. Oh, it's a hard head. Another little hard head. Throw him back. At least he didn't slime my hands up as bad. Sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. Unpredictable like that. All right, let's try that cast net again. Always make sure, by the way, when you reel in your lines, if you're not gonna throw them back out, sort them. Get them out of the way. Otherwise, especially with something like that cast net, you are asking for a mess. You're just gonna get it hooked up, I guarantee it. So let's get that cast nut. Over here. I'm gonna bring both rods in for a minute. Not having any luck on the float so far. And I'm not convinced yet that this isn't a good idea. Not convinced that this isn't a good idea with the pellet. I might switch to a, a bread flake soaked in the, the juice from the pellet or the oil from the pellet. That may bring us some success. But anyway, let's have a shot at this cast net over here, right in front of where I've been sitting. The wind seems to be dying down for a brief second, so. Right, wrist loop secure. It's always nice to do this on concrete, by the way, because your, your rope down at your feet's not gonna get tangled on anything. And that's always an important detail, by the way, is you do it away from your other gear. Uh, the last thing you want is to throw out the cast net just to see it dragging out another piece of gear tangled in the rope behind it. Murphy's Law, you're not getting that back. Here. Don't want to be losing a good mag light. Alright, that was a better circle. That was a better circle. Well, I actually just had our first successful shot with a cast net. What I got was a uh, shrimp. I mean, we're fishing with dead frozen shrimp. This is a live one. And that is what these fish are coming out here after. And we've got uh, the live specimen right here. So what I'm gonna do, you see how incredibly long the feelers are on this animal. The antenna, I think that's what you call him. I mean, he's not an insect, he's a shrimp. But look how long it is, it's like four times the length of his body. Anyway, what I'm gonna do with Senior Shrimp is I'm going to live bait him. <sighs> Pretty much fishing him just the same way we've been fishing the dead shrimp. There you go, steady you guys. Fishing the same way we've been fishing the dead shrimp, just hooking through that horn like I showed you earlier. The pains of fishing at night, just stuff gets everywhere. All right, right through, you see that horn right there on the top of his head, right at the base of that, just go under that. You get a live shrimp, he'll stay alive for quite some time, at least until fish find him. There you go, you see that? See how he kicks like that? He's moving his, oh, that is so neat. The wind's really picking up now. Anyway, hopefully getting a live shrimp out there will draw on some predators that may not have been interested in frozen shrimp. Live bait outfishes dead bait 99 times out of 100. All right, so we've got our bread. Of course, some of these halibut pellets in there. generous with them because we've got plenty to spare. 
Ooh, and they do smell strong. God almighty, that's strong. I'm just gonna kinda knead it in, like so. What I'm gonna do is just tie it around to this. Just chuck that in the water over there. And I'm gonna do it, the wind keeps changing directions, which is making everything very difficult, because you always want the flow of your chum to start out away from your bait and move towards it. So anything that's gonna move towards the chum bag naturally has to come across your bait first. Since the wind keeps changing direction and there's no true current in here, that is becoming very, very hard to manage. Because I could throw it on that side and the wind could change. I could throw it on that side, the wind could change. So we're just gonna have to do our best. I think I'm gonna start on that side. All right, first non-catfish of the evening, or actually it's not even evening, it's like 2.30 in the morning now. A little pinfish just caught right in front of our feet. I actually took the float off just had the shot on and free lined a small piece of shrimp. Figured it might want to catch something that I could use for bait later that wasn't shrimp. You know, I wanted a fishy bait. I got it. Well, guys, the night has become a success. So, on the very small size 12 hook that you can see against my thumb right there with a pair of binoculars and a very tiny piece of shrimp, we just landed. A very small but very pretty red drum and look at those spots on the tail leading right up his body and if you look on the other side he's got two on this side as well really pretty fish I thought he was a big whiting when I pulled him in but this is a very young red drum and they are relatives of whiting I mean they're in the same family oh, I wish you could see that iridescent blue in fact you know what I'm gonna do hang on I don't know if he's gonna show up on camera a little bit better this way if I highlight him with my torch here, hopefully you can see that iridescent blue on his fin. It's just absolutely amazing. Anyway, turn that off. Stunning fish. Glad to have him. Beautiful. And he's going back. Look at that. Gosh, it just doesn't get better than that. There we go. Look at that. Released, alive, the way I like it. Beautiful, oh man. So you can just be out fishing all night with no luck and the mosquitoes get to you and things steal your bait and you get wet and you get uncomfortable and you just get the oil from the bait all over you, you start to smell awful and then just something like that happens and you just can, you get completely rejuvenated. All your energy's back and you wanna keep going and that's exactly what we're gonna keep doing. Keep going. Right, the night keeps getting better, guys. Sand trout. Caught him on that live shrimp we threw out there from the cast net. But look at this beauty. Lovely, lovely sand trout. That is just fantastic. Really long and lean fish. Very soft-bodied fish, too. And that's one of the things about them. Uh, sand trout are not actually listed as game fish. Spotted sea trout are. Sand trout are not. You can actually use these as bait for other fish, which in Texas you can't do with a game fish. Sand trout is actually a phenomenal bait. Hopefully the wind isn't hitting the mic too hard. I've got a towel wrapped around the camera, so in theory that should cushion it a bit. But anyway, phenomenal bait for other uh, fish species. Tarpon love these, stingray love these, sharks love these. Uh, really unique, unique looking fish. I love those huge, you can see those big teeth. And by the way, I know I've kept this one out of the water for a bit. That's because we are keeping him. We are going to use him for bait. So, if you look right there, those teeth at the top, perfectly suited. Ooh, they almost bit me. Perfectly suited for uh, feeding on other fish. And that's the interesting thing about trout, is that when they're young, when they're small, they'll feed mostly on shrimp. And as they grow larger in size, uh, they become almost entirely uh, piscivorous, so they eat almost exclusively other fish. Really beautiful. The colors on these fish, that's one of the only downsides of fishing and filming at night, is that I can't show you the full array of colors that I can see reflecting off these scales. It's like a little rainbow. Beautiful fish. You can just see how wide that mouth opens. That is the last thing a lot of other fish ever see. But uh, let's dispatch this guy. We are going to use him for bait. And hopefully, we'll get something good out of it. Oh, 
Alright, got another fish. Open your mouth, buddy. Open your mouth. Beautiful little fish. Well, guys, I think we're rained out for the evening. As you can see, it just came out of nowhere and just started pouring down. But we got a good number of fish. We got the redfish, we got the sand trout, we got the croaker. Uh, we've got, you know, hardhead, a gaff top, and a pinfish. So, not a bad night by any stretch. And uh, you can count the shrimp too that I caught in the cast net. So, yeah, good time out here. More to come tomorrow morning. Hopefully, enough to make something out of. <sighs> I gotta go change clothes and I'm gonna get some food and I'm gonna go to sleep. See you guys later. Shook up the chum bag again. Still full of halibut pellets, oil slick coming out nice and neat. So hopefully, overnight, that's done a bit of a better job attracting some predators. I feel like this is just so typical. You make plans to come out to the coast and wouldn't you know it, it's pouring down rain. It's basically a typhoon right now. If you just take a look out there, That's what I don't want to be standing in at the moment. Now granted, if I see a fish take off on that line, and I've got open school I've got a bobbin on, if I see a fish take off that line, I'm gonna run out there and get it. Please don't take off with that line. This thing's been driving me out of my mind for 24 hours. You gotta get it on the hook. I think you gotta do it from over here and get it at an angle. strong fish and immediately just based on the fight I knew exactly what was on the line and we got it in beautiful red drum look at that and you can see it's still got that iridescent blue that's something I think they lose a little bit with age the wind is kicking up it's probably howling on the mic but man look at that guys that really is just oh, makes everything so worth it and you know I want to say oddly enough it bit during the rainstorm but I think that's exactly why it took fish like this recognize Aha. Fish like this recognize rainstorms like this, turbulent water, rough conditions, as exactly what they need to render other smaller fish helpless and just ripe for the picking. So that's exactly what I think threw this fish out and caused him to take that piece of dead bait we were fishing with. All right, say goodbye to this lovely animal. He's going back. Yeah, what a fantastic cat. Super pleased to have that. Just wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. Right. Off he goes. Run! Well guys, I don't know if we're going to be able to top that red drum. Honestly, I don't know if we need to. It's been a fantastic night of fishing, fantastic morning of fishing. The heavens are still pouring down rain, and I'm starving. So, I'm going to go get food, and I'm going to catch you guys later.